So right now, I've got air coming out of the defroster. That's the only area. It's not coming out of the vents. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what to look for um, in order to fix this problem. Because there's really, there's it's, it's really gonna end up being probably one of two, maybe one of three things. And uh, almost all of it has to do with vacuum. Not always, but most of it does. So this is the stuff that you wanna look for first in order to fix this. So this is the driver's side, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cruise up, on and, up and under. Okay, so I'm under the driver's side right here. And I'm, I'm kind of looking up and under. Do you, you see this guy right here? That's one of the actuators. And at the end of it, there's an arm and it's hooked up to like a little metal lever. I don't know if you can see that. Now, sometimes that arm will come loose, okay? In this case, it, it isn't loose. But if I take this and if you listen, do you hear that? It's going to the vents now. But if I come back up, we're at the de defroster, we're at the vents, okay? This right here is controlled by this little vacuum line. You see that red tube? That's a vacuum line. So what happens is a vacuum gets pulled on this and just like it, there's a suction cup basically inside there that ends up kind of getting sucked down, which opens this up. So we're not getting any vacuum right now, right? It could be because that vacuum line has a hole in it somewhere inside the uh, cab. Unlikely, but it's possible. If you see that it's broken or, or something along those lines right there and there's vacuum coming from it, well, that's a dead giveaway. Now, granted, it could be this, it could be, but it's probably not. You got to go for what's the most easiest answer because simplicity is the hallmark of genius. We're going to end up popping the hood and let's go check this out. Okay, so when we're looking under the hood, this is the area that, this is on the side of the battery, passenger side. This is a vacuum line. This is a vacuum line down there, okay? This is a vacuum line. And we're looking for deterioration, okay? Because as time goes by, the, the rubber that, uh, is, that is, uh, comprises the vacuum lines, man, it, it breaks down, it just deteriorates. You can see in the past where I've had to replace certain things already, because it deteriorated. This right here is a rig um, because I couldn't find the, the actual right angle uh, tube that I needed, so I just ended up making one. So this is 2003, so we're already dealing with something that's like 16 years old, right? So these hoses are original. So I'm not seeing any, I'm not seeing any damage here. So what I have to do is I have to start following this guy right here, cruising down. It goes up and under and then lo and behold we're missing and it's deteriorated you can clearly see and let, let me see here you can clearly see that that guy is completely deteriorated it's crap if it it's gummy if I squeeze this I can even hear hissing where it's it's wanting to suck air in okay so I'm gonna replace from here to here that's gonna take care more than likely of the EGR problem it's possible that this might have sucked something inside there that I'll have to remove that and clean it out. It's possible, I'm hoping that that's not the case. Um, but this will definitely fix the air conditioner. And so I've got some line here I'm gonna cut and I'm gonna put it there. And hopefully it doesn't create a kink because you want it to have a nice subtle transition because if it has a kink then it's gonna block the vacuum, right? That's no bueno. So let me cut a piece and let's give this a shot. And I'm also gonna turn off the vehicle. So this is what remains of this gummy, nasty thing that just kind of fell apart. It deteriorated. This is currently what I'm using right here. And I just cut it with the razor. And then now we have a new, uh, let me see if I can get it. And then, so now we have a new one right there in this lovely uh, engine compartment where apparently a rat had tried to make a nest. So let's go ahead and turn this guy on, um, erase the code for the uh, EGR, as well as see if we have air conditioning. My grandma and your grandma sitting by the fire. My grandma said to your grandma, we're going to set your flag on fire. What we want to do, and we're going to do vehicle diagnostics. Um, we're going to go to this one because I had done this before and I've already entered it. Yeah, I know. Please turn the key off for 10 seconds. Turn the key on. Like that. 
and now we are going to press enter to continue oh, there's our 401 that's almost always EGR that's almost always so we're gonna cruise down onboard diagnostics to monitor drive cycle yeah exhaust recirculate yeah because yeah that goes back to the yeah not a problem cool uh, ba ba diagnostic codes erase codes are you sure you want to no I'm not sure yeah of course I'm sure yeah they want me to press a whole bunch okay codes are erased and I my friends have AC coming from here see got, I got my AC back which is nice because it's been hot and then so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this for a drive on the freeway and I'm gonna see if I end up uh, striking up that uh, 401 again which I don't think I will because I mean we saw we saw what the problem was it was a vacuum leak okay so if you have a problem with events it's it's probably gonna end up being a broken actuator or it's gonna end up being a vacuum leak more than likely vacuum leak more than likely okay your actuator depending on your vehicle is gonna be in a different spot you know this is a, a 2003 Ford F-150 the important thing is is kiss keep it simple stupid right look for what is most likely wrong okay anyway guys that is that I'm gonna take this for a drive and until next time I'm gonna be driving in cool air talk to you later